I do an experiment at Goldstream Hatchery where I'm developing the method to detect and estimate abundance of stream fish, uh, coho salmon, juvenile coho salmon in particular, just by collecting the water in the stream or in the tank that contains DNA that they slough off, that they leave behind. Just like if I scratch my head and leave some of my DNA behind, the fish do the same thing. From fish it comes off of scales they shed or mucus on their skin or their crap that they just leave in the water. eDNA is especially promising technique because of the little sampling effort that it takes. One person can go to a stream and pick up a few water bottles full and that's it. That's the entirety of the sampling effort at one site compared to what would be needed otherwise for trapping and netting, going back several days in a row, having crews of three or four, and also imposing a lot of stress on the fish by trapping them in a net and handling them. The process for the experiment here is I'll have a tank with known volume of water and I'll put a known number of fish, one or two or a dozen or whatever, and then take uh, several two liter water samples from that tank and hopefully catching the DNA that the fish have just shed into the water. Then those water samples, they're pumped through a super fine submicron filter paper. That paper traps any of the DNA that we were able to collect in that water. We take it back to the lab and the DNA is extracted. It can be sequenced or it can be visualized on a gel and a photograph will say, this is the coho DNA that you're looking for. When we go to the field and take five samples from some unassessed stream, no one's ever been there counting fish before, no one knows, and it produces, say, one positive out of five. Take that comparison back to the benchmark set in experiment. Okay, detections are about one out of five when you have eight fish in 10,000 liters. If you get five out of five positive from a field site, say, okay, we're looking at a much higher density of fish in this stream. It's a more productive system. We're doing this study on coho salmon in particular because among Pacific salmon, they're of a special conservation concern. Part of their life history is that they, after hatching, remain in fresh water for a full year, whereas chum and pink and what have you are, are gone after a couple of weeks. And Spending a full year in fresh water makes them particularly vulnerable because the freshwater habitats are, are threatened uh, everywhere, not just on, in coastal BC but worldwide. If one person could just could sample a stream in 15 minutes with a few water bottles, it could uh, dramatically increase the number of streams that get assessed each year. It could determine salmon presence in a lot of streams that are totally unknown.